Hi there guys, Tom Coyle here. Welcome back to the Solo YouTube channel. I hope everybody is doing very well indeed as ever. If you're new here or you've just got the Solo app or you're thinking about getting it, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. And of course the bell notification icon because David and I are uploading brand new lesson content for the app and generally for guitar players on this channel every single week. So for today's lesson, I want to talk about scales and more specifically, how guitarists tend to practice them. Now this is probably relevant to other instruments as well, but for today's focus, we'll be thinking about the guitar. But if you are playing a different instrument, feel free to practice this material too. It's really, really useful. Now, the way that most guitar players or most musicians practice scales is they will start from the root note and ascend or descend through one octave or multiple octaves. So if I was gonna play the C major scale, I might do the following. And of course I could do that in multiple positions. The key point here is I'm always starting on the root note. Now, another way or a better way to practice is to practice each of your scales starting from each of the chord tones within that scale. So all scales contain four chord tones. So if you think about a seventh chord, it has a root, a third, a fifth, and a seventh of some description. Possibly it might have a fourth if it's some kind of sus chord, for instance, but generally, just for the sake of what we're practicing today, we're gonna to be talking about the root, the third, the fifth, and the seventh of some description within each of your scales. Now a really, really good thing to do, a very useful thing for your ears and your fingers and for your general musicianship is to practice your scales starting from each of those chord tones ascending and descending. Now on the guitar we can add another facet into this practice as well which is to practice each of these starting from every finger on the left hand as well because that will yield a different fingering uh, depending on which finger we start on. There's a lot to practice here but solo is set up beautifully to enable you to practice this material with ease with the great confirmation that you get from solo as you're playing through each of these intervallic functions. And it will get you really thinking about which intervallic functions are in each of the scales as they're presented to you on screen. So if we go over to the app here, you can see that I'm in the changes trainer, which might be a little bit counterintuitive seeing as we're dealing with scales, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Let's go to the level selection screen. And at the top here, you can see we've got all of our chord tones. If we continue scrolling down, we've got melodic structures, voice led structures, and then we get to our chord scales. Now this is what we want to utilize today. You can see we've got the chord scale, third to third, fifth to fifth, seventh to seventh, and then random starting chord tones. And this is the powerful bit. This is gonna enable us to practice each of the scales over a given chord progression, starting from the root, the third, the fifth, the seventh, or random starting points. And that's a really powerful level. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by selecting just the standard chord scale level. You can see I've got all the things you are selected. My order is forward, so I'm ascending, and I've left everything else just standard. I've not got repeat on, I've not changed the key, and I'm gonna hit start changes workout. Now you can see that Solo has presented me with the one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, and one for this particular chord, F minor seven. This is the first chord for this tune, and it's chord six in the key, so it's given me the relevant intervals or intervallic functions. I'm gonna play through those now, starting on the first finger, on the eighth fret of the A string. <laughs> Now it's moved to B flat minor seven. This is chord two in the key. So it's given me a Dorian scale. So now from E flat, so this is an E flat mixolydian scale. So on and so forth. So I can work my way through starting from the root note of each of these scales. So on and so forth. Now. Again, most guitar players at this point would stop and they would move on to another tune or they would change the fingerings, for instance. But the beauty of solo is it allows you to come in here and take chord scale third to third and now do exactly the same exercise, but practice the scale from the third of that particular scale ascending up an octave. Now, don't think of this as a different scale. This is the same scale but you're playing it or hearing it from the third of the chord ascending to the third of the chord. And the reason this works is because we are playing over a chord progression here and we're outlining the sound of that chord progression by playing the relevant chord scale for each of these chords. And that chord scale outlines the sound of the chord if you start 
on one of the chord tones within that scale. Okay, so for F minor seven, for example, it has a one, a flat three, a five, and a flat seven. So if I start the scale that Solo asks for from the one of those chord tones, the root, the flat three, the five, or the flat seven, or whatever the chord tones are that are relevant for a particular chord that Solo is gonna show you, I will outline the sound of that chord. So again here, if I start the changes workout, now you can see that Solo has listed the same intervallic functions as the same scale as we were playing before, but now it's starting from the flat third of this particular chord. So the chord is an F minor seven. So we've got basically uh, a root of flat three, a five and a flat seven. You can see those intervallic functions listed within this scale. You can see the flat three, the five, the flat seven and the one. And Solo is now asking me to play or visualize and play and hear, of course, those intervallic functions from the flat three. So in this instance, there's my F at the eighth fret of the A string. I'm gonna find the flat three, and then I'm gonna find all of these relevant intervallic functions for this scale from that F, but I'm gonna hear the harmony starting from the flat three. So just for reference, here is the F root note. Okay, and I'm gonna play the flat three. Four, five, flat six, flat seven, one, two, and flat three. Okay. Now it's given me a B flat minor seven, and I've got to do the same thing again because this chord also contains a root, a flat three, a five, and a flat seven, as does its relevant chord scale. In this case, most guitar players, most musicians would call this a Dorian scale. It's the second diatonic chord scale of a flat major in this case. Don't worry if you're not sure what that means, you don't need to, but any of you theory guys out there should understand that. Now I'm gonna play and visualize the scale ascending through one octave starting from the flat three in this case. So here's my B flat at the uh, sixth fret of the E string. Let me find the flat three in this case. So I'm gonna go flat three, four, five, six, flat seven, one, root note, two, flat three. Okay, now I have to do the same thing from E flat seven. So in this case, this is a mixolydian scale and it wants me to start from the third. So here's my E flat at the sixth fret of the A string. I'm gonna play uh, three, four, five, six, flat seven, one, two, three. So on and so forth. So you can play all of the scales within solo over any of the chord progressions within solo from the third ascending an octave. Of course, you could now come in, change the chord scale level to fifth to fifth and go through the same thing. So now fifth to fifth. So five, flat six, flat seven, one, two, flat three, four, five. Okay. Now the same thing from uh, B flat minor seven. Sorry, I actually accidentally triggered the fifth. Okay, now from E flat. Now from A flat. Now if you listen, here is the chord progression for all the things you are. F minor seven, B flat minor seven, E flat seven to A flat major seven. There's the first four chords. Now, if you listen as I play through the chord scale, starting from the fifth, you can hear the harmony outlined. And then. So it's a really useful way to practice. Now, again, I could come in and as the final uh, chord tone, I could select the seventh and play through from the seventh ascending um, right the way through the progression. So here's the seventh. And then the same thing. Now, what we're not trying to do here is we're not trying to line up chord tones on strong beats. That is a different exercise that we will also do a video on that is to do with these passing note scales that are at the bottom. All we're trying to do here is visualize the chord scale or a scale from each of the chord tones. And at the moment, what we've done is we've been just ascending through those chord scales from any random finger, okay? Now, before we make this more specific, what we can do is come in and choose this random starting chord tone level. 
Now in this case, what this is going to do is it's randomly going to pick a chord tone as a starting point. So it might pick the root, the third, the fifth, or the seventh. And you can see actually here, we've got the flat three as a starting point for this F minor seven. Where it says what the next chord is, you can see it's starting on the fifth. So if I play through now, we've got the flat three for F minor seven. Now it's asking me to play from the fifth of B flat, which I'm going to find here. And now the root note for E flat. And the third for A flat. Fifth for D flat. So I'm going to actually play that here so I don't run out of uh, guitar. So this is a very, very useful way of playing. Now feel free at the beginning of each new chord to just play the chord as a reference. You may trigger one of the notes or two of the notes within the scale because obviously solo is listening to the notes you're playing. But if you want that harmonic context, you can actually do that. So that would look a little bit like this. So here's my F minor seven. I played the chord just so I had it for reference and it's triggered the one, but that's okay. Then play the scale. Now play the, and then play from the flat three. Here. Don't worry if it triggers a couple of notes. If you want that harmonic reference point, it's worth it. Okay. So when you've gone through each of those levels, what you can now do is become very specific. So you could say, okay, I'm going to do the root notes to root notes, or just the standard chord scale, and I'm always going to start each of those scales from my first finger on the left hand. And that's going to give me a specific set of fingerings. So that might look something like this. So F minor seven. Now B flat minor seven. This is a Dorian scale. And then from uh, E flat. What I could now do is do the same thing, but start from the second finger, then the third finger, and then the fourth finger on the left hand. Now the third and fourth will give me very similar results. So you can, but sometimes there will be slight differences. Okay, now when you've done that, then go to the third to third level, chord scale third to third. Do the same thing, play the chord scale starting from the first, all the way through the set of changes. Then from the second finger, all the way through the set of changes. Same thing from the third and fourth finger. Then do fifth to fifth, same thing, seventh to seventh, same thing. And then see if you can do the random level starting from the same finger each time. Okay. And what you'll do is you'll develop multiple pathways for each of these scales starting from any chord tone. Now the final step for all of this is to go into the basic level again, just the chord scale and hit the reverse button. And what this is going to do, of course, is descend through each of these scales. So when I hit start changes work out now, it's asking me to play the scale backwards or descending. So if I find this F just here, again, I'm going to start on my first finger. One, flat seven, flat six, five, four, flat three, two, one. Same thing from B flat. And then from E flat. So on and so forth. And again, what we can do is come into the level, select third to third. And now we've got the scale descending, not in this case, because I need to hit reverse, sorry guys. Then hit reverse and then do it. And you can see now we've got the scale descending. So now we've got flat three, two, one, flat seven, flat six, five, four, flat three. Against that F minor seven. Now against the B flat. So in this case, we've got one, sorry, one, flat three, two, one, flat seven, six, five, four, and then the flat three. So on and so forth. So you can do it that way as well, descending. Now it's a huge exercise to run through every single one of these different options. It's going to take you months and months and months, if not years to get everything down. But there's a wealth of different tunes within solo that you can practice this stuff with. So all of these different tunes and we add tunes on a fairly regular basis as well. So you can practice with any of these different exercises or tunes doing this method. So there we go, guys. That's quite a long lesson. There's a lot of material to practice in there. But if you go into practice your scales, the thing to take away from this video is to not just practice them from the root notes ascending and descending. It's a really good idea to practice them from all the other notes within the scale with particular preference 
for practicing ascending and descending from each of the chord tones within that scale. So I would definitely recommend working in the changes trainer to start with. Then if you want to get into the scale trainer and start using specific scales, that's a really good idea. But the part of the reason why we do this is to outline harmony very specifically, being able to target the chord tones within a scale. Okay, so I hope that's useful, guys. I hope you're enjoying your practice time with Solo. And of course, feel free to get in touch with us. Again, if you want to, go to the settings of the app, go into, that's the note calibration, go into the settings there. You can tap send feedback or help, and that will allow you to send us an email. You can ask us any questions. Leave comments below in the video, of course, and uh, let us know if there's any particular videos you want us to cover, any topics you want us to cover, or of course, anything you would like added to the app. Once again, hit the like and subscribe buttons below, and of course, the bell notification icon to be notified every time we upload a new video. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. My name's Tom Quayle, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.